Look. So this morning we'll be coming from Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10 and then we'll be coming from 2 Corinthians 5 17 and it reads if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with, the mouth, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things, come on, say it again. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And uh, if I could add a title to my message this morning is Salvation is a Transformation. Can we say that again? Salvation is a transformation. You can have your seats. I'm kind of nervous this morning. <laughs> Man, I'm all wait, but I, okay. I'm going to stick to the script too, y'all. I'm going to really do that. I'm going to try. Uh, Lord, Lord, I already prayed. I'm going to stick to the script. Well, not the script, but what the Lord has given me. It says, okay, now, I have been a member of Redeeming Grace family for a little, for about 20 years now. I, I, I joined when my daughter was four years old, and now she's actually 25. So it's uh, Mother's Day actually would be 21 years, I believe, that I've been a part of the Redeeming Grace family. And I was not raised up in church, meaning my mother didn't take me all the time. You know, my grandmother sent me to church, but my mother didn't take me all the time. So when I came to the grace, it truly was a learning experience for me. I accepted Christ and I was baptized in a church called Refuge over off of Dakota Street um, here in the city of San Antonio, uh, an apostolic church, you know, Pentecostal fire, you know, man, die, come on now, that's me right there. And that was one of the reasons why when I came to Redeeming Grace, I, I, I really loved the way that Bishop uh, uh, allowed, uh, he had a Pentecostal touch. It, it just wasn't that old Baptist tradition, but uh, we can shout and we can praise God and we can speak in tongues and, you know, we can do all those things, you know. It was open for the Lord to do what he needed to do. And I truly believed in my heart when I accepted Christ at the time of confession that, that, he, that he had been raised from the dead. And, and, and once I confessed and believed immediately, my spirit man was changed. It was sanctified and perfected in Christ Jesus. Now my spirit belongs to God. Say that our spirit belongs to God. Not just my spirit, but our spirit belongs to God once we accept him as our personal savior. Because Ephesians 1 and 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were, you, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, the seal is the mark of ownership. In a believer's life. <laughs> it is the guarantee. You know like the engagement ring. Because as the church. I am the bride of Christ. So when I accepted Christ. As my Lord and Savior. I became engaged. <laughs> I had to understand. That we are made up of three parts. Which is the spirit. The soul and the body. Once an individual confesses. And receives Christ. The soul still must be renewed daily. The soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions as I research. So therefore, the Bible teaches us to renew our mind. And Romans 12 and 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. Transformation of the mind comes by way of a believer in Christ being obedient to the word of God. When this happens, the soul agrees with the spirit because the spirit has been sanctified and perfected by God. The word of God is perfected because the word is God himself. Then the body is made, then the body which is made of dirt and desires to return to dirt will be obedient to what your spirit and soul tells you to. Because the mind has been renewed. And when the mind is renewed, it deals with your heart. And when your heart deals with your body, you can tell your body what to do. It don't tell you what to do. You don't, you, it, it, you tell it what to do. You tell it how to think. You tell it how to move. You tell it when you're in Christ Jesus. Now, when I first accepted Christ, I did not understand what I just explained. <laughs> I thank the Lord for his saving grace because I was not saved on my own goodness. So, therefore, I cannot lose my salvation because of the lack of my goodness. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. So it was by faith that confession was made, and my heart believed unto righteousness. Take these glasses off. Even if I did not feel like it, I was still saved. If I did not turn, if I did not turn away from Christ and renounce my belief in him, the engagement ring is still mine. Yes, the enemy was busy, determined to destroy me. I had already had a child out of wedlock at this time, 18 and searching for answers. I was in church trying to understand, but because the enemy knew I did not understand my rights in Christ, and the child out of wedlock opened doors for him to have legal right in my life, he was able to chase and tempt me with iniquity that was set up before me by those that came before me. See, sometimes when we accept Christ and we, we do our thing and we're, we're really trying to do right and we're walking, and because we lack understanding, the enemy knows just like God knows. But greater is he that is in me. See, the enemy had a plan for my life, but God had a greater plan for my life. I tell you, I tell you, I'm standing before you today. Because he could have killed me in my sin. But God said no. He said no. Hmm. See, iniquity means twisted or distorted. It is anything that turns, a, uh, that turns away from God's straight and perfect path. That was what's wrong with, the, with Satan. You know, he was all beautiful, what, what the word says, and pretty, and, and, you know, worshiping everything. And then, you know, iniquity came in, and he thought he was better than his creator. You know, we can't think you better. You were created because he created you for his purpose. You, we answer to him. He don't answer to us. So in the book of Psalms 51 and 5, it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. This was David speaking, and the Bible says, Sin was found in David from the beginning. From birth, he was inclined towards sin. Therefore, a two-year-old can tell you no and run off and do wrong. Sin is the fruit of iniquity, and iniquity is what was visited. Iniquity is the root, and sin is the branches. Generationally, iniquity runs through every family represented here today. When you see patterns of sin running rampant through your family lines, it's iniquity. We are so quick to say, you are just like your father. Or you are just like your mother. No. When it comes to the fruit of sin, it is just a duplication of what has been done by previous generations. And when the enemy was able to tempt you, if, you, if, you, if you're like your mama or your father, it was something that you just fell in. Because nine times out of ten, somebody did it before you. And I'm not pointing no fingers because we're all responsible. We're all responsible for what we do. But I'm just trying to help you understand where iniquity comes from. It, it has to be rooted out so the next generation can be free. In other words, you must change it. After you've heard what you've heard today, you must change it. After you've heard what, you heard to, what you're hearing today, you have become responsible for, what, for the word of God. What you didn't know, now you do know. 
So you can't walk out of here with the same old mindset talking about, I don't know why they keep doing what they're doing. Now you know where it comes from, and, and you can research it for yourself. Don't walk out of here and take my word for it. I need you to research it for yourself. I need you to understand it for yourself because that's how you can have the victory. It's not so you won't just sing about victory. You won't just talk about victory, but you'll actually walk in victory. You understand what I'm saying? You have to know these things for yourself because I didn't. I didn't. So here comes the enemy saying to me, hmm, you had the nerve to get engaged to Jesus. That's what he said to me at this time in my life, you know. You had the nerve the nerve to get engaged to Jesus. I got you caught up in fornication and with child, and I am depending on you to remain ignorant so I can destroy you and your seed. Yeah. See, see, you know, he didn't literally say that, but really that's what he's saying to all of us. You know what I'm saying? I, now that I'm, now that I, where I am, I am, I know that that's what he said to me. You had the nerve. You was on my side. You had the nerve. Yes, he says that. And so, in Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. The enemy said to me now that she is trying to get caught up in Jesus, but have not repented from her previous sin. I have legal right to come in, to come to her, to come at her with a, with something a little deeper. See, you know, I was still in sin. This time he came at me with adultery and abuse. Yeah, I did it. I'm saying I did it. I'm letting you know I did it because I don't want the enemy or you to hold it against me. Because everybody in here has done something. It's time for me to tell my story so that I can move on to glory, baby. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. It, but it ain't, but it, it wasn't me then and it's not me now. You understand what I'm saying? God had a bigger plan for me, but I was ignorant. You know what I'm saying? It happened in past generations and people did it like it didn't mean anything. And when I seen it, I didn't think nothing of it because everybody else was doing it. And so I didn't have no understanding because that's why God says we're supposed to teach our children. We're supposed to raise them up in the ammunition of the Lord. Because when we don't do that and then they fall, they, be, they fall because of what we've done. We've got to do it right the first time. And if we do it right the first time, the generation righteous will be blessed yeah <coughs> yes thank you Lord by this time <clears throat> I had been beaten up so badly so uh, bad spiritually mentally and physically I did not even think that Jesus <clears throat> wanted to hear from me I spent a lot of years being afraid to pray or to seek his face because, you know, I, I knew I was wrong, but I didn't know and I didn't understand. Even though I confessed the Lord and I really believed, I didn't understand. You know, and so when these things came upon me and, you know, and I was being abused and, and, and you know, and I, I just didn't know. I didn't know. But I'm going to tell you, God had a plan for my life. You see, I thought I started off right. I remember the first time I shouted in that old Pentecostal church. The pastor was trying to get me filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, at, at which that time it was foreign to me. I stopped going after, um, I stopped going after shaking hands. Wait, I, don't, I stopped going after shaking hands with the devil by default. The, the, the one way, uh, the one, uh, then one day, somebody told me that the Lord loved me and he was not mad at me. But God, but God, he sent somebody to tell me that in spite of where you've been, the Lord loves you and he's not mad at you because see your spirit is still with God. You may not have been able to, you may not have had an understanding on how to tell your soul to sit down somewhere and follow the things of God, <coughs> but you're still with Christ. So <coughs> the Holy Spirit led me to repeat Psalms 51. Yeah. And I read it all the time, all the time. When I was so sad and I was so down, I would read Psalms 51, not knowing about iniquity. I remember saying to the Lord with tears, purge me with, with hyssop and I shall be clean. 
Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face, hide, not your, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Hallelujah. And then one day, as I petitioned him for a church home, he said, I want you to go to the church with those flags. I had came to Redeeming Grace on one musical one night, and this man was running around with these flags, Brother Purnell, and he was sweating, oh my God, oh my God. And he said, remember when you visited the church, you were so concerned about the sweat getting on you as a man with the flags passed by, because I sure was, and oh boy, but he was worshiping and praising the Lord. And the Lord, so he told me, he says, I want you to go to Redeeming Grace. Now, it took me three years to get here, it did. But he told me I want you to go to, to Redeeming Grace. I, he reminded me of the flags. He told me, he even told me, he said, I said, but Lord, I don't have a car. He said, but when you call them, somebody is going to let you know that somebody can come pick you up. And that's exactly what happened. When I called the church, they told me, you don't have a car? We'll come and pick you up. It took me three years to get here. And I remember when I was down at the other church and, and Warren Law kept coming to me and he says, why are you not down at Redeeming Grace? And I was looking. How he know? <laughs> he came to me three times, different times. Why are you not down at Redeeming Grace? How does this man know? You know, because I'm still green. <laughs> Why are you not down at Redeeming Grace? God kept reminding me of where he told me to go. You see, I didn't come to Redeeming Grace looking for a position. I came positioned. See, there's a difference. I was sent here by God. Sent. Not looking for a position. Because when I came in, I remember. I remember, I remember, I remember. Sister Langford used to always tease me later in life. Because when I came in, I remember. I had on my little Walmart dress. I used to walk with my head down and I didn't talk because I didn't think I had a voice. But God is so funny because even though I thought I didn't have a voice, he going to call me to be a prophetess. I'm like, what? You calling me to do what? Uh, come on now. I'm like Moses. I can't even talk. But he said, you going to talk because I'm already in you. Redeeming grace means able to save people from sin, the transforming power of God's redeeming grace was upon me. Do you hear what it says? Listen to what your church means. What, what Bishop, what God gave, when God gave Bishop a vision and he gave him the name, he didn't give him the name for nothing. Because even if he only gave him that name for me, I know that I have been transformed by the power of God's redeeming grace. So not only was I sent here positioned, the name matched what I needed. You hear me? And I know some of you here today, you didn't come here. You came here because you needed to be redeemed from something. The grace of God, the transforming power. Because I'm telling you, I don't walk with my head down no more. Not only do I have a voice, God gave me a voice. I'm different because God transformed me by his redeeming grace power. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As years pass, I begin to understand that there is no such thing as a big sin or a little sin. In the eyes of the Lord, sin is sin, and everyone in this room has fallen short at some point in time. Now, the word salvation means deliverance in a spiritual context. We have been rescued, understand, rescued from the power and dominion of sin. And Colossians 1, 12 through 13 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of his inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom 
in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus took our place on the cross, and every sin was nailed to the cross. He is the author and provider of salvation, and there are blessings for those who repent and trust in him. Justification declares us righteous on behalf of our faith in Jesus Christ. Sanctification is the process in which God develops the new life of the believer and gradually brings it into perfection. Our blessings of salvation are, the other blessings of salvation are reconciliation and adoption. When our sins are forgiven, we move from the position of being God's enemy to being his beloved children. In John 1 and 2, I mean 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right, the right to become children of God. To those who believe, believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When we confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, that God, has, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we are saved. It is not, it is one thing to confess with the mouth, but it's the believing, <coughs> it was, but it's the believing with the heart, the, uh, the heart, we are believing that we are justified. We are believing that we are sanctified. We are believing that we are redeemed. We are believing that we have been reconciled. We are believing that we are adopted. It's, the, it's only by the heart that we love and appreciate what the Lord has done for us. It's only by the heart and relationship with Christ that we can love in agape love. The depth of our agape is based on the depth of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Just like the depth of your deliverance is based on the depth of your confession in the name of Jesus. It makes no sense to receive the gift of salvation and not open up the gift and read the instructions. If you receive a new washing machine and you do not read the instructions, you would not receive the full benefit of what the machine has to offer. No, you would not receive the benefit Benefit. So when you so you will lose out on the options that may benefit your family by using this machine. This is what happens when we do not read the instructions about salvation. We miss out on the full benefit. Some fall into sin and stay there for years, which allows the enemy to have legal right and ground in your life. If you turn, I mean, in turn, it will also affect the next generation by sickness and disease, blindness of the spirit and blindness of heart. And Paul said in Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, certainly not. God is a, God, grace is unmerited favor from God. And it has been given to us to help us, to help keep and sustain us in the time of need. Grace is not something we should take advantage of. So yes, once you are saved, you will always be saved. But to remember, grace is not a ticket to sin. And if you sin, it is to your advantage to repent and walk away from the sin not only in your mind but in your heart hallelujah hallelujah there is coming a time in your life when you are going to come to a crossroad when i came to mind i decided on if i wanted my children to reap the benefits of the blessing of the lord or the curse that only comes from the ignorance of sinning and not understanding the depth of how it can affect my life and the next generation i no longer wanted to hurt god so i chose to fall in love with him just like he fell in love with me the holy spirit began to show me there is uh, there are many things about God that that we cannot be understood with the mind the mind must be transformed by the word so the heart can be renewed and, and an old mind and dark heart will never be able to understand or have a relationship with the Lord second Corinthians 5 and 17 says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation all things have passed away and behold all things are new even though the Lord desires for us to accept uh, and uh, 
accept and understand the depth of his love. He is such a gentleman that he leaves a choice up to us. In the name of Jesus, I have made up my mind and I chose not to allow myself or my family or the next generation to live in defeat in the name of Jesus. I have accepted the engagement ring. I have made the decision to marry the one and only true, authentic, genuine lover of my soul in the name of Jesus. And today, better by and by, I understand Romans 10, 9 and 10. And I will always remember when Pastor Caleb used to sing. Y'all come on and quiet, help me because I don't know all the songs. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified me and freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious day. Keep on. Come on.